Hey everyone, the topic of this video is December the 25th, breaking with traditions of men. And there are many people, I was one of them, that believe that December the 25th is the nativity, the actual birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I believed it for years, and it's amazing how we can fall into traditions and how very hard they are to break once they are so well established. I mean, as in this depiction, I mean, who doesn't love Rudolph? I mean, with that red nose. And then we have these smiling little children and all the gifts that this elusive imaginary creation called Santa brings all these little gifts and toys to the children who's naughty who's nice but you know it's amazing how something I mean you think about these little smiling kids and I've heard so many people say well it's all about the children you know, uh, we celebrate this, you know, to bring happiness to the children and, and what have you. And I can think back. Our two boys were little, and me and my husband setting up late at night, putting putting together all kinds of different toys. I mean, you know, uh, big wheels and, I mean, you name it. You know, we, we did the whole scene and decorated for Christmas, and it was always such a happy time and family and cooking and baking cookies and making different snacks and, and treats and stuff and giving them to our neighbors or family and friends and it is just such a warm best of holiday and I'm all about all of that however the purpose in the in the reason for the gathering is the delusion it's the it is not the time, it is not the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I did not know that for years and years and years, never really thought too much about it. I just fell in with everyone else. But you know, when you discover the truth from researching our Heavenly Father's Word, it's not by just going off and going, thinking that it's a pagan holiday. It, it doesn't start that way. It starts off with the need and, and the wanting to know what the real truth is. When was our Lord Jesus Christ born? And it starts from there. Do people really want to know or do they just want to follow the traditions? Do they just want to be happy and uh, just not make any waves or say anything and just be and perpetuate a tradition? I can tell you this, once you know the truth, you'll never see Christmas the same way. You'll never see December the 25th the same way, once you know the truth. And when you realize that the conception of our Lord Jesus Christ was on the ninth month, 24th day, which is Keslu. And we'll go there and look at my graph, the degree scale, and it will be obvious at that point about the conception. And then 290 days later will be his birth. But even going by, and I'm not Catholic, but I, we can go and look at when they consider what they call the Feast of the Immaculate Conception is December the 8th. But it's actually December the 7th slash 8th because, you know, the Gregorian is a little bit off compared to the Hebrew. So, but, I mean, December the 7th was the conception of our Lord Jesus Christ. They have that right. But then they have the nativity down as December the 25th, and that's not correct. They abolished the true birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was September the 29th, and that was what had once been called Michael Mass. 
And I know that there's a lot of controversy about when we go and read Luke 2 about the Lord Jesus Christ's birth and people not understanding about the taxation or the census that went out. Well, I think it's really simple. When do we get taxed today? You know, when do our taxes come due? October the 1st. It's real simple. We're still under Roman dictate. So our taxes, they come due. That's when the books are closed, cleared, and then the taxes are due beginning on October the 1st. And then you have till December, the end of December, to pay them. Otherwise, you pay a penalty. So, I mean, it's only obvious that we still have the same time frame of taxation. And as it is today, it was then. And so, I mean, it only makes obvious sense that people during the time of, of Jesus, they would have been taxed during a time when they were all gathering. It, it would have been so much easier when they were all gathering at the end. Harvest was done in September. I mean, the harvest was over. It was a time for the Feast of Tabernacles, and so many went to Jerusalem in order to worship during those, fe- that, that was a requirement, that was a required holiday of our Heavenly Father. So it only makes perfect sense that that would have been a time of, quote, senses and taxation. Just like this depiction, give someone the Christmas they've been dreaming of. Well, you know, those are wonderful words when you think about gift giving or trying to do something nice for someone that you love. But the thing is, is what is the purpose behind it? When we look at Christ must, Christ mass, but this is not a Christ mass. If in the perspective of how it is being treated. It is not the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. So how do we reconcile ourselves? How do we teach our children? How do we break these traditions? How do we teach our children about the truth? How do we tell them that the greatest gift ever was the gift of our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's not brought in a bag by a guy wearing a red suit or by reindeers, you know, flying through the night. How do we get away from the materialistic aspect of this holiday or holy day that they want to call, even though it is not the birth of our Lord. And it has nothing to do with our Lord. That's the point that I'm trying to make. And I'm not trying to be a Grinch, but when the deception is there, it's deceptive to say that December the 25th is the Nativity when it's not. And it brings about, it starts with a lie. It's a lie to tell your child that there is a Santa and Santa's coming in the night and he's going to bring toys and gifts and bite a cookie or, or what have you. I've heard people say, oh, well, it's for the children. Well, what is for the children? Really think about this. Parents lying to their children about an entity that does not exist that's going to bring them a gift. Is that teaching them about Christ? No, it's really not. It's teaching them about a mythical creature, entity, named Santa, that does not exist, that's going to bring them these gifts, when the greatest gift is our Lord Jesus Christ of all times, but it's not on this date. And then you have these children growing up through the years and they go to school and all this and they come home and then they ask you, 
mom, dad, you know, uh, is Santa real because Joey blah, blah, or, you know, Peter, you know, did, said this, and he said that his parents said that there was no such thing as Santa. And then you're like perpetuating the lie. Oh, well, they don't know anything. But, I, you know, I remember as a kid talking about Santa Claus, and we didn't have a fireplace. And, you know, you have all these depictions of Santa coming down, down the chimney. And then I asked my dad, I said, well, you know, if Santa's real, how, how does he get in the house? You know, how, how is he bringing me this present? So we, my Santa, Santa back in the day was really poor, you know. We only got like one gift from Santa Claus. My dad said, well, I leave the front door unlocked or I leave the window uh, unlocked where he can get in. So you start perpetuating this imaginary creation and then you keep lying to your kids, and then at, eventually you end up having to tell them, yes, yeah, there is no Santa. Basically, you're telling your child, oh, I've lied to you all these years. Ha, ha, ha. And then the kid is kind of like devastated because they realize that there is no Santa Claus and that you've lied to them their whole life. What good is that? So then... The unseen, thinking about the unseen, well, our Lord Jesus Christ has already come in the flesh and has been resurrected, and he will return at his second advent, but at this point, he's not seen. So what does this teach your children? Well, if Santa was mythical and he didn't exist, and I, I, didn't, I never saw him, well, then maybe uh, God's not real. Maybe Jesus isn't real. So what, what is the purpose of the season, really, truly? Think about it. To lie to our children. It's for the children, right? You know, it's for the children. So let's lie to the children. Uh, a short time bit of joy for them to, for you to lie to your child their whole life. And then trying to break the tradition when you find the truth. That's even harder. Because now... My children are grown, my two boys are grown, and they want to, they don't understand, uh, mainly my youngest son. He doesn't understand why I don't celebrate Christmas like I used to. He doesn't understand it. He's trying to tell me it was one of the funnest times of his life, you know. Well, I can remember him and his brother fighting almost immediately over uh, their gifts or their toys or it was not a fun time. I mean, um, I don't have the fond memories after they got to be teenagers. Anyway, it was no pleasure after that. But uh, but he's wanting to enjoy Christmas and uh, and share all these memories with, and traditions with his children. And I'm explaining to him about the, uh, he's telling him the truth. That these are that it is not the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is not the time of all of this. So how do you break the traditions? I don't want him to tell his children to perpetuate a lie now that I know the truth. And it doesn't mean that we can't, like say on December the 7th and 8th, which is his conce our Lord's conception, uh, which is also corresponds with Hanukkah, which is the Feast of Dedication and Lights, I'm thinking, light up your yard. I mean, go for it, you know? But that'd be like December the 7th and 8th. It's at the conception of our Lord Jesus Christ when he began to dwell with us in the flesh. And so, trying to reconcile. Some people say to celebrate this holiday do it for the children well when the time comes and you have to totally disclose to your child that it was a lie that Santa's not real and then you look at their little faces and the devastation and the betrayal and the hurt that comes over their little faces when they realize that Santa does not exist and I remember it very well and, and it was hurtful it hurt me to have to admit to my child that I had lied to them for years 
And I don't know how many people really think about that. Well, here's a here's another little example. I, I'm not the only one on what our children feel when they discover that they've been lied to. Uh, I'm just going to read this. It says, uh, this is from a, a little girl talking to her mother about point blank about Santa and says that she's been asking every day so we were truthful and she may never speak to us again so she this little girl writes this letter and it said uh, a note to her parents she says you have no idea what you just did she states I really tried to believe everyone told me it's your parents I can't believe you anymore is the Easter Bunny real? Question. How about the Tooth Fairy, huh? You just ruined a 10-year-old child's life. Thanks. Nothing will make me feel better. You lied to me about something I loved. That broke my heart. And broke is capitalized. B-R-O-K-E. So, truly lying about all these different things these false traditions and we think it's a game well in a, a child's mind it's not a game they trust their parents and then suddenly they find out that their parents have lied to them so their parents are liars and satan is the father of lies he's the father of it so therefore what i'm saying and i'm not saying trying to make myself like I'm perfect because I did all these things too. The tooth fairy, I'm, I've still got their teeth uh, in little Ziplocs. But uh, the Easter Bunny, all of this, Easter Bunny is grove worship. It's Ishtar, phallus. You know what a phallus is, right? Phallus worship. So it's not a part of God's word other than the fact that it's called grove worship. And Ishtar, Ishtar is pagan. It's a tradition that's been adopted into the Christian denominations. Uh, so now we have Santa, who is adopted into the Christian denominations. And not only that, but then there's a word called rapture that is not part of God's word either. That's been adopted into the Christian denominations. So the point being is that there's three lies right there. What does that teach our children? Really need to... We all need to think about this, what we're doing to our children with these false traditions, these things that are not spoken of. Well, they're spoken of, but they're all in the negative. You know, the grove worship and all that, we can go to the book of Ezekiel, and our Heavenly Father finds them to be abominations. Ezekiel 13, especially about the, you know, fly to say their so doctrine. But we need to really, parents, we need to think about this. Do it for the children. Uh, give them a gift, a fleeting moment of happiness only to lie to them. And to have them look at us in that, with that look of betrayal on their face. I still see it. I'm not proud at all. And I really regret it. And I hope that our Heavenly Father forgives me. And that our children will learn the difference and to see the truth. Our Heavenly Father does not tell us to lie to our children. So we really need to consider some of these things. And understand how these traditions have been become ingrained in our everyday life. Wrapped around certain holidays that are not holidays and understand them for what they are and then backtrack and consider the holidays that our Lord Jesus Christ took part of and there's three of them they're in the Old Testament you know it's the Passover and he tells us to do communion then there's in the unleavened bread that means beware of the false doctrines of the Pharisees. Then we have Pentecost. And then there's the Feast of Tabernacles. So we really need to consider why our Lord Jesus Christ took part in these 
these feasts, yet today's time, we're not taught them in the Christian denominations, for the most part. And if they are, then somehow or another they've been perverted in most cases. We better consider this because there's a refinement coming. There's a great shaking. Those things that can be shaken and, and those things that cannot, it's coming. These traditions, these false traditions, we need to understand them for what they are. And then go read Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark 13, and what does it tell us? Father will betray son, mother will betray daughter. And why is that? It's because father and mothers are going to be stuck in the traditions of men. They're already taking on those false traditions, just as Christ was explaining in the Gospels to those Pharisees. They were already bound up in the traditions, and they wouldn't be moved from those traditions. Consider it. Please study our Heavenly Father's Word and the Gospels and understand the importance of these things. Take it to prayer before our Heavenly Father and ask for discernment and guidance. Trying to reconcile this time, these holidays. But we also need to understand, like with Hanukkah, even it has a different meaning behind it. It's the dedication of the temple is what it goes back to, that great light. And we know, or we should know as Christians, that our Lord Jesus Christ is the temple. He is that great light, as we learn in John 1, chapter 1. And so, understanding that it's not because of some uprising, as Hanukkah is celebrated in so many ways, but it's talking about that feast of lights, that feast of the dedication of the temple, which the temple was dedicated at the moment that our Lord Jesus Christ was conceived. That is that feast of dedication on December the 7th and 8th through the 8th, according to the Gregorian. And as in this depiction, you know, you try to explain some of this, these truths to your friends or your family, and uh, you, it's like you suddenly grow two heads. They just look at you and go, what? Uh, because the traditions are so well established. And until someone feels that inner need, that inner desire to research the truth for themselves, and the only way you're going to find the truth is in our Heavenly Father's Word, and it takes time to dig out the truth in a lot of cases it, it's it's time consuming but we do it i mean those who really want to know the truth they get in our heavenly father's word and they start digging for it and then it becomes obvious how things line up and we learn the truth and when and like i had said earlier once you find that truth there's no there's no going back there's no looking at this holiday december the 25th the same way and then just as this depiction uh, from Wikipedia, talking about September the 29th, this is the Feast of St. Michael, or it's when the angels, as we learn in Luke 2, we can see here in verse 13, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, verse 14, glory to God, in the highest and on earth peace goodwill toward men this was the time of the feast of the archangels or the feast of the angels and this happened on september the 29th and it falls around the autumn equinox and just check this out it says at 
that time harvest was over and the bailiff or reeve of the manor would be making out the accounts for the year. And this continues to this day. If you're a property owner, you know October 1st is when your taxes are going to be, that's when you're going to get your tax statements. That's when they're mailed out. That's taxation. So this tells us at that time frame is when this all took place. It was in the autumn. Uh, even the shepherds. They were in the fields. They were abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. If it had been winter time, December the 25th, they would have had their animals all up in enclosures. They would have been feeding them hay. We do that to we do that today. It only makes sense. It's think logically here. So how do we chart a course? How do we make a difference? How do we educate other people regarding this time frame? How, how do we tell them the truth where they understand it? And we'll maybe take the initiative and go study our Heavenly Father's Word for themselves so they can learn the truth and the reason of it and why it is important to understand that December the 25th is not the, the nativity, is not the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's a reason that has been working its way in the world. There's a purpose behind December the 25th being set up, this false date. There's a reason behind it. And it's deceptive. It's to deceive people. On December the 7th in this depiction here you can see this is Mary and this would be her cousin Elizabeth she went straight away after the conception because the angel told her that Elizabeth was six months with child and it all came to pass and so in as, as we learn in Luke 2 so we have the conception, December the 7th, 8th, on the Gregorian. And then 290 days later, Feast of Tabernacles is the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. That would be September the 29th. So why has it been set up that December the 25th is the, quote, nativity when it's not? We, we learn in our Heavenly Father's Word. On December the 24th, 25th, on the Gregorian, which is the 10th month, 10th day of Tabith on the Hebrew calendar, we learn that the king of Babylon came against Jerusalem. Hopefully people are studying and they understand that our Heavenly Father gives us examples in the Old Testament to prepare us for these end times. And the king of Babylon in these end times is none other than Satan himself when he is cast out of heaven, as we learn in Revelation 12. And we learn in Revelation 13, he comes to deceive the world in performing supernatural miracles before the eyes of men and he's going to pretend to be Messiah, be disguised as Messiah. He's the false Christ. His name in the Greek and Hebrew is Apollyon. And in this little depiction, I think this one's from Star Trek, and this is supposed to be Apollo. Well, I mean, Apollo is Apollyon. It's all part of the same word all has the same meaning uh, he's Greek but he's going to be gorgeous he's going to be beautiful and he's going to be able to perform these supernatural miracles and he enters in peace safety security promising prosperity for all we know that that's the time frame king of Babylon came against Jerusalem that's the pointing he's going to stand in the holy place and claim himself to be 
Messiah and God, as we learn in 2 Thessalonians 2. So, I mean, I think the purpose of this, quote, holiday, as it's written in God's Word, 10th month, 10th day Tabbath, and it's found in Ezekiel 24.1 and 2 Kings 25.1, that the king of Babylon came against Jerusalem. We also learn more in Jeremiah 52, 12 through 25. Because seven months later, this same creature is going to burn the temple and burn the city. And we'll go look at the graph and we'll see how this all lines up. And this is my solar graph that I was inspired to do and it's based on the degrees and right here is conception of our Lord Jesus Christ and as you can see this is in the ninth month Keslu and the first day corresponding with November the 14th slash 15th on the Gregorian and this particular day would make it the ninth month, 24th day, as we learn in Haggai 2. And this is December the 7th, and the 265 mark making it December the 8th. This is what corresponds with the Catholic faith. They call it the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. Well, if this is his conception, how can it be... 15 days later, that there's his birth. That doesn't make sense. 15 days? No, he was conceived according to the flesh. He was in the womb of woman, born from above into the embryo through the bag of water, of birth, just as we all were. Her pregnancy was 290 days because his birth is on the seventh month 15th day right here the first day of the feast tabernacles and so when you go from here all the way around it's 290 days it also states in i think it was in luke 2 she was great with child and when you look that word great up in you have to kind of go back into the Hebrew, but you can also determine it in the Greek, but it's like overdue. I mean, great with child. She was past time, abundantly, mightily with child. So that, in my opinion, means that he was a little bit more in the womb than what is normal uh, for all of us to make it to this time frame instead of the two what would be like considered the norm would be like 280 it would have been great with child so she was you know a little bit longer in her pregnancy so to make it to this 195 mark which is the feast of tabernacles now why do i think this is so important to understand the conception and the birth and we also have his crucifixion right up here this is in the first month of Beeb. this is according to god's word he named it a Beeb in this first month and this is the first day and on the 14th day was the day of the preparation for the the lamb passover the passover lamb and our lord jesus christ was arrested and it was during this day daytime on the 14th that he was crucified and then before evening set he was he was placed in the tomb and then at sundown is when it becomes the 15th day we can kind of look as on this scale here this is horizon this is the daytime up here and then this is the night the clock goes this way so this would be the 14th day and he was he gave up the spirit at the ninth hour and so he was put in the tomb 
And then at sundown is what begins Passover. This begins the 15th day right here. Going into the night. Starts the new day. And then at sunrise is the daytime hours. That's the way it's split up. It's 12 hours of daytime and 12 hours of nighttime. But anyway, this is important to understand the time frame of these events. We have his birth, and then straight across, just in opposite, on the opposite side, is his death. We have the conception of our Lord Jesus Christ over here, and then over here we have the conception of John the Baptist, 180 days later. And I'm going to show in paint, over here is the conception of our Lord Jesus Christ, and then... When we do, I'm just going to try to go right in the center. But we can go straight across. It's just on the opposite side of the degrees is the conception of John the Baptist at the 84 degree mark right here. So this right here is that 180 days. And then doing the same thing, we can go right here at the 195 which was the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we can go straight up to the time of his crucifixion or his death on the cross. And it's just straight up. It's right there. It's just from this side of the degree chart straight across to the other and this also is 180 days. And now I want to show something in opposition or opposite side of the degree chart that corresponds with this king of Babylon came against Jerusalem on the 10th day, 10th month of Tebeth. But when we go here, and we have to remember it's like 279, 280 on the Gregorian, which is December the 24th, 25th. But I'm just going to go, I'm going to change colors here. I don't want to confuse us. I'm going to go red. But we're going to go straight across in opposition. So it's going to be around the 99 to 100 mark on the opposite scale. That's keeping it perfectly centered right here. This puts it in the fourth month, Tammuz, on the ninth day. And this is really important. In 2 Kings 25, verse 3, on the fourth month, ninth day, there was a famine in the land. And we learn in Amos 8, 11, the, during these end times, the famine for bread is, is not for bread but for hearing the word of the Lord. So we know that Satan, the Antichrist, comes disguised as Christ, disguised as Messiah. His power is in his mouth. We learn this in Revelation 9. It's a flood of lies and deception. So, I mean, we can take this as a heads up, a warning we also learn in Jeremiah 39, verses 1 through 3, on this same day, fourth month, ninth day, Jerusalem was broken up. Well, from this point right here, we get down, we, we learn from over here that the king of Babylon came against Jerusalem, but then... In the fifth month, which is of, it's right down here. From the seventh through the tenth day, which be 127 to 130 on this degree chart. It's going to be right in here. That Nebuchadnezzar came and burned the house of the Lord and all of Jerusalem. 
And that great burning is going to be from the lies and deception. Well, in this time frame also, there was that one great destruction. That was the first temple that Nebuchadnezzar destroyed. Well, then in 70 AD, there's a second destruction by General Titus of Rome. And this also, according to what I read on Wikipedia, is talking about the ninth of Av. The ninth would be at the 129 mark right here, going into the 130. It's going to be right here. So from right here to right here is a big heads up. Because there's been the first temple and the second temple were destroyed on these in this time frame right here. Well, between the fourth month, ninth, tenth day of Tammuz to right here is what is called between the straits. And this is a a, a time of morning there's something that we need to just be watchful of during these this time frame right here this false christ this satan the antichrist is coming i'm not saying he's going to show up here i'm just saying that there's likely something that is going to lead into this and we know he comes in peace safety prosperity for all and then he's going to be performing supernatural miracles as we learn in Revelation 13, he doesn't appear at the beginning. He appears at midway. And we learn in Revelation 9 that that time frame has been shortened to five months. So, anyway, I'm just pointing some of this stuff out so uh, we can kind of get a, a general idea of, some of how some of this stuff falls according to God's word on these dates. But there's been two destructions. Uh, the two temples that were put on that Temple Mount area were destroyed in the fifth month during this time frame right here. Two destructions. And for those who understand, our Lord Jesus Christ is the temple. And so just keep that in mind. I mean, Satan's come in disguise as Christ. He's going to pretend he is the temple. You know, in body, in his image, he's pretending to be God. We learn that in Second Thessalonians 2. So this is just a warning. It's just a heads up to be watchful in these end times and to understand some of the importance of why it is important to know when our Lord Jesus Christ was born and his conception because this particular date is important because the king of Babylon came against Jerusalem. And we know that Jerusalem is the pointing. It's the barometer of the end times because that's God's holy land over there. And Mount Zion, Mount Moriah, and Mount of Olives, those belong to the Lord. And we know that Satan comes looking like Christ, you know, in Revelation 13, looks like the lamb but speaks as a dragon. So that tells us straight away, he is going to be pretending to be Christ. So he's going to appear and people are going to think that he is Christ, that he is Messiah. So we have to think about why some of these deceptions have been brought forward and they're so ingrained in tradition. I mean... So, I mean, people are going to be looking, when you're telling them the truth, they're going to think that the one telling them the truth is the pagan. Just as they thought that Christ, when he was trying to tell them they had turned away from the word of the Lord, that they were following the traditions of men, they hated him for it. They did not want to believe that they were uh, ingrained in any kind of a tradition you know, they wanted, they wanted to act like they were following the, the word when they had turned away from the word and were doing their own traditions. It's no different then than it is today. We have people that will not believe that December the 24th or 25th is not the, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, that that's the nativity, because they don't want to go study it for themselves 
So therefore, anyone that speaks and tries to point out the truth, then they're not going to believe them. They're going to think that they're the pagan. And this is how it all, I, I can see it all forming. This is how brother will betray brother. Father will betray son. Mother will betray daughter to death. They're going to, you know, hand them over because they're thinking that when this false Christ shows up, that he is the true Christ. They're going to fall into the apostasy and they're going to deliver up their loved ones because they're going to think that they have gone into paganism because they don't believe the way that they do. This is how this is all playing out. And that's okay. It's all part of God's plan. But we need to be prepared for some of this. For those who know the truth of the conception, time, and the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, we just need to be prepared for it. And I also wanted to point out in my last video when I was talking about the cornerstone under the dome, there was that carved hole that was around the 222 mark, 223. Well, I'm just going to go straight across and show where that lines up. It's at the 42. 43 mark right up here on the degrees so the hole is right here that carved hole where I believe our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified and it just goes straight across in opposition or opposite side of the scale and I find this of interest because there's many things that's happened in the second month, the month of Ziph, that falls right in here. As in the days of Noah were and the flood, Noah entered the ark and then the flood came on the 17th day of the second month right here. So we have a connection right here from this 222.5, with on the opposite side, and we have a corresponding date right here to uh, Noah's, the flood of Noah's time, and we know that that flood was 150 days. And then if we look in Revelation 9, it's divided into the beast of the sea, which is that one world government that will be formed. And then... In the, the second half is the beast of the earth. That's when the, the Antichrist will show up. That's when he appears and claiming himself to be Messiah and Christ. So, in that, so it's divided into 75-day periods. So I think that this is an important time frame also to be watchful. Just saying, you know, I'm not setting no dates or anything like that. I'm just saying that there is some corresponding scriptures that go back in the book of Genesis. Uh, Genesis 7 and 8 and 9 all line up right in here. And then in also in Genesis, in Noah's time, Genesis 8, 4, on the 17th day of the seventh month, the ark rested. So that's right here. That's going to be during the time of the Feast of Tabernacles is when that falls. So anyway, this is just something to kind of be watchful of because we do have some corresponding events, dates that fall on the scale. But anyway, I'm not trying to overload. Um, I just wanted to bring awareness to the importance of understanding the time frame of the conception and the birth, the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, and understanding perhaps maybe why this has been brought forward, this false date right here. And this is a corresponding scripture that explains what happened on this particular date, and it's given in God's word. 
right here about the king of Babylon coming against Jerusalem. So this is just a heads up for all of us that are trying to prepare uh, for these end times and trying to be watchful. So let us all be watchful and understand some of these occurring events because it's coming. Um, we don't know exactly when, but I think we will know it when the event starts. Our Heavenly Father gives us these examples in time for a reason. And it's for our edification, for a teacher, for us to understand. But this right here, two destructions in this same time frame, I find that of great interest right here, without a doubt. So let us be watchful. And one other thing before I close out this video, right in here is in Haggai 1, right in here, this was the sixth month. And we learn about September 11th and the importance of some of the stuff that happens right in here. So just keep that in mind. And please take all of this information to prayer before our Heavenly Father and ask for His discernment in all things. I'm thankful to all the things that has been revealed to me and I hope that I'm not trying to tell people what to think or anything like that I'm just posting things that I can see or things that, that I'm aware of we know that there's a great refinement coming and I don't think it's coming I think it's here uh, there is a refinement going on as I speak right now and we all are being tested being prepared for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ and there will be those that overcome the mark of the beast by the blood of the lamb and the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ and then there will be those that take that mark and the mark is already on so many people. It's so easy to fall into the traditions and to be deceived. Satan is the father of lies. Lying to our children is wrong. It's an abomination. I can see this now, and I really regret being wrapped up into some of these traditions just as Easter is a tradition and you can't tell them that either or the rapture cannot tell them that there's not going to be this flyway or that Easter bunnies and, and hiding fertility eggs was something to do with phallus worship they won't believe it so but anyway there is a refinement coming people will either seek the Lord and the truth that's found in his word or they won't but for those who are striving to follow the word of the Lord and stay a pleasure in his sight, you know, God bless and um, just hang in there, stay strong in the Lord. And our Lord Jesus Christ warned us, if they hated him, they're going to hate those that stand with him. And I think that we can kind of see how it's going down especially with these ingrained traditions of men. They're going to cling to them. They're stubborn. They're going to cling to them as they did then as, and they will now, especially amongst all the confusion that's going on currently. They're going to, they're going to cling to those traditions because they feel com that's their comfort zone, and it's hard. I'm still, I'm struggling with it right now because, like I say, this time of year was always one of giving and joy in our family. It was a tradition, and 
now I, but when you know the truth, you, you when you learn that it has nothing to do with Christ, that December the 25th, then you'll never see it the same way again. And separating from that tradition is where I'm at now. And then also dealing with my own uh, son, my youngest son, who is wanting to follow in that tradition and me trying to tell him it's, it's pagan. Uh, anyway, God bless and everybody just be watchful. Mm -hmm.